to uh, Peter. Uh, perhaps we could uh, hear from you. <coughs> Thank you very much, uh, Michael, and uh, for today I'll be mostly brief, and we're very deliberately uh, retaining time for the discussion session. Uh, so I've only got four slides, and what's more, two of those I'll do it fairly quickly. Uh, so this is really a forward view of trainer responsibility. Uh, what have we learned, uh, particularly through uh, the experiences of the panel members here, and what is next, what do we see coming on the horizon? At its core, I think chain of responsibility is interesting more because there's uh, little administrative requirements, generally speaking. It allows a lot of flexibility for organisations on how they meet those requirements and demonstrate what they've done. Uh, and I think that uh, you probably heard uh, Willoughby talk uh, early on about uh, the safety opportunities to, uh, to drive down uh, the, the injuries and death toll on our roads further still. I think that's a constant challenge for all of us to be as wise uh, as possible and uh, collaborate as widely as possible to achieve that. And I think the, uh, the other side of training responsibility is very much that uh, productivity concept. And I think the simple vision of uh, training responsibility would be to give a, a safe and productive uh, road freight sector. And uh, further, that we really want to achieve that wherever possible by voluntary compliance. And to go back to the uh, sort of core of this, I think uh, this forum itself uh, it's extraordinary to get uh, so many people of high calibre from different organisations. I think all power to the ALC for convening this forum. And some of the, the best discussions that we have on chain of responsibility is in these sorts of forums where the hard questions come up. So please do pen them down and uh, I'll ask them shortly. Now, I'll tap through these fairly quickly. I won't take your time with this very long at all. This is uh, simply a grab off our website. This is uh, chain of responsibility, prosecutions from uh, New South Wales activity. Uh, I won't make the point here at all, just to make the uh, general statement that we're active in chain of responsibility. And as the through state, uh, we see it as an efficient means by which we can uh, facilitate a more efficient and safer uh, road freight sector. The trend in uh, underlying these uh, statistics would be gradually less focused on operators. Um, gradually increasing focus on uh, on parties at uh, more and more senior levels would be the, um, the broad trends. This is uh, potentially a little bit uh, of a both interesting and or controversial slide. Let's <coughs> step through uh, what we're trying to capture here. This came out of a discussion in uh, in my office with a number of our senior staff. And I was saying, how are we going really against all the various sectors? And I said, you know, forget any niceties, forget um, any subtleties, how are we really going? You know, I might say at the outset, this is uh, a Melbourne, and for instance, uh, you could uh, see then how uh, primary producers or customers or manufacturers. Uh, so there's a few points I wanted to make that uh, I think the PPs, uh, generally speaking, have done some of the best uh, thinking in uh, chain of responsibility. They're not all the way yet there yet, but. Uh, some of the transport peak bodies, the ALC and others, um, are quite genuine, I would really, in their motives uh, for, uh, for promoting chain of responsibility and good take-up. Uh, and what we repeatedly see that varies a lot by sector and by site and by company is a degree of take-up. And uh, I think that, uh, from my perspective, is one of the key things. How can we uh, genuinely close that gap? So that um, by the time our staff, or Richard's staff, or any other state, uh, turn up and look at a site um, where they spot the gap and, and really to be very candid it's um, disappointing to find because we have really good discussions with uh, key executives and we're sort of hopeful and when we look at a, uh, a site and think well it hasn't quite met what we hoped. Um, so that's I think close the gap for want of a better phrase is what um, would certainly promote. And uh, my final slide, and I promised I would be quick, uh, is under future directions uh, on the uh, left hand side of the column there is by issue, um, speeding, fatigue, roadworthiness, load restraint, prevention and mass. Uh, and mass. Uh, also increasingly we're finding uh, work with the police around uh, the very hard end around uh, drugs and firearms. And I think uh, there's a simple triangle between uh, drug use, speeding and fatigue where 
and people doing the wrong thing uh, work one or more of those factors to try and see the operational advantage. Uh, so there's no point targeting one by itself uh, to at least realise they're connected in a broad sense. Uh, further on the right hand side of the column, just to give you a bit of a flavour, uh, that uh, increasingly we want to move to a risk based approach. Uh, and inherently, I think that's the, the right way to go philosophically. That firms that have a um, good compliance record or no risk should see less and less of us. And uh, the discussions would have to be strategic or more outcome focused uh, or more candid discussions around trends. Uh, what might we do by way of different technology? or the different vehicles, uh, or the different systems. Uh, so compliance record we see key is uh, how we can frame uh, our approach uh, from uh, collaborative uh, through to enforcement. And uh, the, the mission that we've got our staff is get um, as many firms and entities as possible into the collaborative space. Um, and while I'm realistic, they're not, they can't all be there, um, but that's the objective. Uh, further on distribution centers, uh, it's uh, no secret we've been active in distribution centres uh, and because they're so key in the um, freight logistics chain, uh, there's typically uh, bulk loads in and uh, smaller loads out and uh, they're extraordinarily busy. If any of you work with these sites, they're ex um, extraordinary sites for activity and uh, it's the economy uh, literally flowing by your eyes once you're at uh, one of those sites. Uh, for distribution centres, it's pretty clear that there's quite a way to go for um, chain of responsibility and how they can um, apply better protection um, for their management executives and the other parties in the chain. Uh, and very briefly on the last three shipping containers, uh, we, we know now well that the uh, load security within shipping containers is not ideal. And we've seen a number of accidents where uh, unsecure loads within have shifted causing uh, crashes. Uh, and uh, we've, we've had some work done on the massive containers and the load of straight within is quite a tricky one, really. And we've realised that that is absolutely a chain of responsibility. The, the poor old driver moving um, the shipping container, which might be loaded heavily to the front or to the side, or poorly restrained it within, they won't know that when they're moving the container around <coughs> and can, can be quite prone to a, um, to a crash without realising it. And uh, I think to be also candid, my assumption was that this would be overseas firms in particular. Um, that's not solely the case, it's equally Australian firms. Uh, so it's not only the import, but it's uh, also our export. Um, so it's shipping containers we do need to focus on, and uh, we do need the other parties to come to the fore. Uh, oversize and over mass, uh, and uh, we've had a look at that sector recently. Uh, somewhat disappointing where uh, a lot of the loads have been significantly over mass when we've looked and measured. Uh, so uh, we want to work with that sector to bring in a more professional and compliant approach. Uh, there are good operators in that uh, sector, so it's certainly possible there's, uh, there's strong rays of hope there. Uh, and the overheight ones, I don't know the extent to which this troubles other cities, apart from what I read in the media, but it's acutely <coughs> problematic in Sydney. Uh, if we have an overheight truck approaching a tunnel, uh, it ruins the day's traffic. Uh, so we really want to get uh, the overheights uh, right down from impost uh, and congestion, the sort of acute safety risk where it can be a horrendous uh, crash potentially, and, uh, and also the damage to infrastructure. We've got a range of repair jobs we'd have to do through our engineers to repair tunnel portals, um, run of equipment or fire extinguishers and lighting and so on. And finally, metropolitan transport, uh, and this is all of the, uh, a lot of these entities don't think of themselves as truckies, so it might be uh, furniture removal, it might be uh, spoiler of civil engineering jobs, uh, it might be local distribution, uh, and metropolitan transport is a wide range of uh, lots and lots of smaller loads, and uh, probably can uh, go under our radar if we're not careful. Uh, one of the things that we've spotted, particularly for New South Wales, and uh, I'm keen to talk to my colleagues on this, is that we've counted 13 uh, significant civil engineering jobs that are coming forward. There's North West Rail, South West Rail, Light Rail, uh, freeways of uh, North Nex, West Nex, and they can count up to 13 major ones. Uh, there'll be enormous amounts of equipment moved, whether it's oversized bridge beams, or uh, spoil, or uh, rocks and timber all of the sort of infrastructure construction things. Uh, we, we're worried about uh, that industry because the, uh, the business demand would be huge on uh, increasing 
probably over a five-year span. Um, so we really want to work with that sector to make them as strong and compliant as they can be, which we certainly see some risks as that, uh, as that ramps up. Now, uh, I might like pause there to deliberately uh, leave some time for discussion, and then I'll hand over to uh, my colleague Richard. Right, thank you.